it's time to tackle the techless. Welcome back to Anvil Doom Miniatures. My name is Dietz, and yes, I'm probably the worst high elf simp around. I haven't painted any high elves for about six months now, and I'm itching to get back into it. I've had a few comments asking when I'm going to paint some more high elves, and today is the day because I'm going to paint the big boy himself, or the little man himself, Teclas. I made a promise to myself that I would have my whole high elf army finished and painted by the time of the old world, but that didn't happen. I still have a huge amount of high elves to paint, so many to get through that. I'm not even going to bother, I'm just going to paint them at my own pace. But anyway, I'm going to get back in the swing of things and paint the mage of all mages, everyone's favourite magician in Warhammer Fantasy or the old world, Teclas. Now I'm a massive fan of the original 4th edition sculpt of this guy, but I don't own it unfortunately. I only have the 6th edition, but that's okay because I don't see many people painting the 6th edition guy, so it will be pretty good to see something a bit different. And if you wanted to use this guy as a guide to painting your 4th edition one, you could pretty much use the same techniques and my recipes as well. But anyway, let's get straight into it. I'm going to give this guy a Wraithbone undercoat to start off with. First up, I'll tackle the skin tones because I tend to make a mess around the face areas when I'm painting dudes with helmets. If I do the face first, I don't have to worry about being too neat because I can just paint over the helmet later. Now I don't know if I'm alone having this feeling, but I tend to tuck away my prize and favourite miniatures because I feel like I'm not at a good enough level to give them the justice they deserve. I've had this miniature sitting in my pile since getting into miniature painting, but there comes a time when you need to pull your socks up and just do it. Painting hero miniatures and putting in some effort really gives me motivation to tackle more bigger and bolder characters and projects. So if you have a pile of precious miniatures sitting in the corner that you don't want to paint, whip one out and get painting. You can always strip them down and paint over if you make any mistakes or if you don't like the paint job. Now, as it has been a while since I've busted out the white and blue high off colors, I do have a bit of brain fog on how to approach this miniature, but I find the best way to remember is to jump straight back into it. I'm gonna mix up half Ulth One Grey to half Celestra Grey and apply this all over the Lawmaster's robes. Adding in this Celestra Grey will darken up my undercoat nicely. Now as usual, I tend to paint things out of order sometimes, especially when I'm painting single miniatures. When I'm batch painting, I have everything organized and regimented, but sometimes when I'm painting hero miniatures, I kind of paint whatever I'm in the mood for. And because the cape and the hat were really big, I thought I'd just approach the blue from start to finish and get it all done. I've been experimenting with some of my recipes recently, and I've added a few more steps in just to boost some of the contrast. I add three parts techless blue to one part Vallejo ultramarine blue and apply this all over. To darken up the recesses, I then apply some severely watered down ultramarines blue wash. It will look a little dark after this step, but stick with me because I'm going to punch in some bright highlights. I go back over the washed areas with my techless and ultramarine mix again in a semi-glazed consistency, making sure nothing gets in the recesses. Then it's time to highlight up and I start with pure techless blue to large areas. Then I mix in some lothen blue to the techless blue and eventually work this up to pure lothen blue. To make the cape and the hat a little bit more vibrant, I mix in some blue horror to the lothen blue and glaze this to the smaller sections. To finish, I do an edge highlight of blue horror and today I'm going to give the points a bit of a dot highlight with some blue horror and white mix. I will be doing some stars in the cape later, so stick around for that pile of fun. You can't be a Lord of Ulthwan without some gold. I'm going to use some Gehenna's Gold as my base because it's a little bit darker and has a sort of a warmer tone to it, which tends to work well against the cold whites and blues. For the leathers, I'll use some Doomble Brown as the base colour, and this follows the same trend as the Gehenna's Gold being a little bit more warm. Now my High Elves have a bit of a twist to them, and I like to include the colour purple where I can on little bits of trim and decorations on their robes. What really inspired this was the 6th edition Codex artwork. Teclas on the cover has his blue and purple robes, and that image just pops to my mind every time I think of High Elves. And to finish up for the layers, I use some gunmetal as my silver base on the sword, helmet, and the staff. All right, it's time to slap on some highlights, but before we get into that, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit the like button, and if you wanna stay up to date with all my videos and old worlds and Warhammer Fantasy content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it, and I have so many metal miniatures that I wanna paint this year, and I'd really appreciate the company. So thanks for that, and let's get back into it. White is a really tricky color to paint and get right. Sometimes it can be too gray, or sometimes it can be too white, so I'll take you through how I approach it. Now as my base coat has already started off a little bit darker, it makes my next few steps pretty simple. I use pure Ulth One Grey for my first highlight in a semi-glazed consistency and apply this to all the raised areas. I then mix in a small amount of white to the Ulth One Grey and cover less of an area. I try to push this mix towards the bottom of the robes as well. 
Now if there are many folds on the sculpt, I recommend making your own. This will just give the mini a bit more dimension. To finish, I use a skinny edge highlight of pure white. As I said earlier, I'm going to be jumping around a little bit, so I felt like it's time to slap on some washes. I apply Gullum and Flesh Wash all over the Gehenna's Gold, then some Agrax Earthshade over my leathers, Black Templar over my silvers, and to finish off I throw some Magos Purple over my purples. I like using these washes because they give the recesses some dark lines, and they also give me a little bit of extra depth to my colours. As I've been painting minis consistently for some time now, I've noticed that some armies miniatures are harder to paint than others. I guess that's no surprise. I do find High Elves taking an enormous amount of time and effort due to the heavy detail, colour schemes and technical difficulties with the true metallic metals. When I'm painting my Chaos Dwarfs, I feel like I'm having a lot more fun in the painting process because I'm painting less details and really admiring the wackiness of the sculpts. If you're ever feeling a bit burnt out and you've been painting miniatures from the same army for some time, maybe it's time to try something else and mix it up a bit. It's been a fun journey for me so far, and as I've been painting a variety of miniatures, I do start to notice these sorts of things. Now as this miniature is starting to take shape, I'm going to throw my favourite colour on the gems, and that is Emperor's Children. It's time to make this gold sparkle, and I like to approach my true metallic metals the same way as I'd approach any other paint. I go back over with some Gehenna's Gold, making sure I don't get any in the recesses. Then, I mix in some polished gold to the Gehenna's Gold and work my way up until I get a pure polished gold highlight. I'll cover less and less areas towards the edges and top facing areas to emulate some light. To finish, I give it an edge highlight of half polished gold, half silver. Now for the silvers, and I'm just going to go back over with some gun metal and then mix in small amounts of silver until I get a pure silver. I always make sure I'm watering down my metallics just a little bit to help them flow better off the brush. Now just an FYI guys, I am changing my water after I use my metallics because there's nothing worse than getting metallic flakes throughout your miniature. You don't want to be a grub. I love an ivory bone look to my wizard's staff. So I mix in one part skeleton hoard to one part contrast medium and slap that all over the wraith bone. When that's dry, I then glaze on some bone white to the top sections of the staff. And then I mix in small amount of white to the bone and glaze a little more to less of an area. Moving on now to give this guy some bling bling and this guy has about 43 gems like every other high off but I never ever leave a gem behind. To kick things off I glaze watered down black over the top right of each gem and if it's a little light I wait for each layer to dry and then apply some more over the top until it's dark enough. I then mix in a small amount of white to Empress Children and highlight the bottom left of each gem. Once I'm happy with that, I mix in a little bit more white and highlight a smaller area on the bottom left. And to finish, I throw in a pure white dot over the black. It's pretty simple stuff and these gems look pretty good to me. So we're pretty much done with this miniature now, but I want to take him one step further and give him a bit of oomph, so I'm going to throw some free hands on him. Now I understand that doing free hands is anxiety inducing, but I really recommend giving them a go because you're never going to get better at them if you don't give it a try. And it's always good to remember that it's only paint and you can always paint back over and try it again. Let's kick it off with a simple line on the bottom of the white robes and I recommend using your brush that has the pointiest tip possible for this. Take your time and slowly drag the brush in the direction you want the line to go in. I'm going over where the whites and raised areas are with Lotham Blue to make the line look like it's moving with the robe. Next, I'm going to throw some moons on the collar, and like always, I'm just going to slowly and carefully draw tiny circles in Ulthwan Grey. I like painting a little bit, then looking where it's going, and then painting a little bit more. Rushing through this will definitely lead to some nightmares, and I like getting it right the first time. I had some lines on the collar as well, just to make it look like some sort of embroidery or something like that. The staff has a little book on it, so I decided to add some high off runes. Thankfully the High Elf Army book has some pretty cool references, and for Teclas I'm going to choose Lekai, which means Light and Nobility, and Menlui, which is Water, Life, and a few other things. I'm just going to use some Dryad Bark for this, because I think using black would be a bit jarring. Painting these things was an absolute nightmare, and I know they aren't perfect, but they will do. As I said earlier, I'm going to slap some stars on the cape. I draw a few lines that crisscross, and I make them a little bit different from each other. Having them different sizes also helps. I've said it once and I'll say it again, but the toothpick is the number one hobby tool. I sharpen the points up a little bit, and then I just use it to dot on stars here and there with blue horror. And with all that done, this techless is finally complete, and here it is.
Thanks so much for sticking around to the end, my dudes. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of the model or let me know what you would do differently. I'd love to hear it. Also, I want to say a massive thank you to my Patreons. You guys are a bunch of legends. I really do appreciate the support. And if you want to join our Patreon, the link is in the bio and I can't wait to see you on the Discord. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. Take it easy, be kind to one another, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.